Hello, everyone, and a warm welcome to all our viewers and attendees. Thank you for joining us today on our YouTube channel. Today is a special day as we introduce a remarkable group called Partners for Youth with Disabilities. We are honored to host Mel Luen, the volunteer coordinator at PYD. Stay tuned to witness Mel engage in a meaningful discussion about the group and enlighten us about their programs. Without further ado, let's embark on this inspiring journey together as we delve into the world of disability programs and mentorship. So, sit back, relax, and get ready for a thought-provoking and engaging discussion. Thank you for being a part of this event. Uh, hello everyone, thank you for being present here today. Uh, we have a very special guest from a very special organization present here with us today, named uh, PYD, Partners for Youth with Disabilities. We all welcome you, Melvin. Uh, we also welcome our ally directors, Dr. Muna Mankara and Dr. Sh Sandra Shapovic. Thank you so much for being present with us today. We also welcome our ASL interpreter, Valerie Shirley. Thank you so much, Valerie, for assisting us today. I am your ally project manager signing in for today. And if you need any assistance, please let me know in person or on chat so that I can assist you. So, uh, Mel, thank you so much for it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank today. you for having me. Uh, Mel goes by their pronouns, they, them, there. Being born in New York City, she is a volunteer coordinator of Partners for Youth with Disabilities. She has been working with them since May 2022. Prior to working at PYD, they worked with folks experiencing chronic homelessness as a housing navigator, three years of working one-on-one -on -one with homeless and disabled youth and adults has taught them a lot about intersectionality of advocacy and social justice, and has helped them realize their passion in uplifting and empowering marginalized communities. Hence, Mel continues their passion and helps PYD provide high quality one to one group mentoring programs where they care for uh, youth with disabilities. Thank you so much, Mel, for being present here. Thank with us you. Today. Their link is present in our daily newsletter and also on our Instagram page. Do follow us for that. If you have any questions, please hold on to the last 15 minutes where we have a QA session. Mel, the floor is yours. Thank you. Start. Thank you so much, Ally, for having me here. I am very, very flattered. I apologize if I keep switching from looking at my webcam to the screen. Lots of screens to look at. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so my name is Mel. My pronouns are they, them, theirs. I am the volunteer coordinator at Partners for Youth with Disabilities. I'm here to talk to you a little bit about Partners for Youth with Disabilities and what we do, our programs, a little bit about my experience there. Um, so we'll get started with my slide deck. There's a lot here. I will probably skip over some of it. It is extremely long, um, but it will provide a nice background over my voice. <laughs> so this is our logo. We are called Partners for Youth with Disabilities. And our mission statement on the next slide <laughs> is to create a world where young people with disabilities can lead self-determined lives filled with dignity, pride, and purpose. This is our mission statement. What does this mean? So in our current world, right, the reality of society is that use of disabilities and people with disabilities of all ages face stigma, fear, and isolation, right? We do not live in a world, in a society that thinks about people with disabilities. However, by offering programs like mentoring, community, careers, and inclusion, PYD bridges the gap over stigma, fear, and isolation aims to create a world where people of all disabilities, of all ages, can feel comfortable, can lead these self-determined lives. Since 1985, so we're not very young, but we're also not, you know, a super old company. We have had award-winning programs that include one-to-one -one mentoring. We have career readiness based in school and community. We have online mentoring. Um, that one's actually really cool because we have nationwide reach with that program. We have a theater arts program. We have inclusion training for organizations and business partners. And over the summer, we have youth leadership forum and young leaders rising. I'll start getting to a little bit more about that. So we talk about mentoring. Mentoring is both an individual program at our organization, but it's also the core belief that we shape our beliefs around, right? So mentoring, the definition of mentoring taken from the National Mentoring Partnership and Mentor 
is a structured and trusting relationship that brings young people together with caring individuals who offer guidance, support, and encouragement aimed at developing the competence and character of the mentee. So there is a mentoring gap, right? I'm sure everyone in this room is going to think, even if it wasn't through an actual program, an adult in your life when you were young who served as a role model for you, right? It could be an adult. It could be right a school guidance counselor. It could have been a parent. It could have been your older sister, older brother, a sibling, someone who you really looked up to, who exemplified values that you're like, I want that, right? I want to be like that person when I grow up. This person is pushing me beyond my comfort zones, right? However, one in three young people do not have an adult mentor like this in their lives. So about 16 million youths reach the age of 16 without ever having this positive male figure, um, adult figure in their lives. Sorry. Our PYD mentoring program, this is actually how PYD started. Back in 1985, our founder, Regina Snowden, she, <laughs> came up with this idea that like youth with disabilities need to work with adults with disabilities. So we were founded in 1985 prior to the passing of the ADA. Huge. This wasn't really a thing when disability rights were even being thought about just yet. The goal was to help young people with disabilities meet their full potential for personal development and independence. We started with nine youths paired with nine adults who had similar disabilities. Now we serve over 70 mentors and growing, mentors and mentee matches right now. And I know for a fact we have, we just had a really cool event that celebrated some year long matches. One of our longest going match is an eight year long match between a mentor and their mentee. And I had spoken to someone last year who had been with her mentee for 30 years. So they're still from the foundation, <laughs> no worries. You know, so they met, they hung out and they're still talking to this very day, you know? So we're kind of kind of the leading force in disability mentoring, right? No big deal. <laughs> we, we're based on the mentors' elements of effective practice, and our model has been replicated in numerous states. Some of this information is a little bit boring, I apologize. <laughs> but we have inclusive mentoring practices. We make it as acceptable as we possibly can. We do extensive intake and background checking for our mentors and mentees, but we make sure that it's as comfortable as it can be, right? Some of our mentees do need um, a support with them, a parent or a guardian to help them ask questions. Some of them feel more comfortable in person, which we offer. You know, in the day of digital uh, interviewing, we do, you know, if you feel more comfortable without a webcam on, or if they're more comfortable talking on the phone, if they're more comfortable texting, we try to accommodate that as best we can. We have extensive training for our mentors, right? We have some really generous adults who volunteer their time, but have never been a mentor before. Um, to some of these young people. So we have, we just created a new training, but it's about two hours where we go over the basics. We also have free online courses that go over how to be a mentor to a young person with a disability. We also have some foundational information on how to interact, say, with someone with PTSD, ADHD, someone with um, sensitivity to stimulants and stuff like that. We offer support to our mentors. We're not just going to pair someone up and throw them out into the wild. We have staff who check in with their mentors and mentees once a month, make sure everything is going well. Are there any resources you need? Um, and we have inclusive marketing, right? We, we were here at Northeastern um, last summer. We go to a bunch of different places to market our material. We go directly to high school. We go directly to um, parent support committees and we let them know about our program. And we are constantly trying to extend our reach, making sure that people who can't come to us, we go to them and let them know about our program. So one-to-one -one mentoring, it's community-based. What this means is that our volunteers are from the community around us, right? We're not paying anyone. We don't have the money for that. They're directly from the neighborhoods. We are um, recruiting youths directly from the neighborhoods. Um, we serve youths starting at age six. I think it's up to age 24, so a very wide range um, with any and all disabilities. This is a very common question that I get when I um, interview volunteers, you know, what disabilities do you serve? We serve any. We also do not ask for official diagnoses. If a youth identifies or, you know, connects with having a disability, they can join our program. We match adult mentors to a youth to explore and engage their community and how they see fit, and we operate based on a best fit model. What this means is that we really take in mind what the youth is looking for, right? We have some youth who are like, oh, like, 
I want someone to, you know, like I have an older sister, I get along really well with her. So someone who's in her mid twenties, female, maybe, you know, can make room for me when I'm shy, right? You really match based on their fit as friends, right? That's really the core of our mentoring program. I do have a video here. It's about an hour, a minute and a half. Um, I'm going to play it. It just spotlights our mentoring and some of the uh, mentors and mentees we've engaged with over the years. Mentoring is at the core of all that we do at CYB. And the reason is that relationships matter. Something that I've seen for mentors, mentees, and families is that although it starts in a very structured relationship, it often can transform into something where the mentor is like family to the mentee and to the family members. And so that's really wonderful to see. We've been we've been doing this thing pretty consistently for the last four years. Um, and I feel like Amy's been an integral part of my, my success in high school and she'll continue to be a big part of my life. We have mentors that have grown up and now are in their 30s and 40s and they're giving back. So it's being passed on. PYD and, and this relationship, this match has truly changed my life. And, um, and it, I really don't know kind of what this would look like without the past four years working with PYD. There is nothing like mentoring and role modeling to change the life of a young person with a disability. It's truly been a, a guiding factor in my life. So thank you so much for bringing us together. I've heard that a lot from my mentors. It makes me so happy when I get to pair an adult mentor with a mentee. And six months down the road, they're emailing me like, Mel, we have been having so much fun together. Thank you so much for connecting with this adult that I never would have otherwise met, right? Please don't play that again. All right, so a little information about our mentors, right? Our mentors are at least 18 years old. They're in the MAC 128 belt. It's a little bit ambiguous, um, but basically, you know, if you really want it, I could show you a MAC, I do not have it on me. Um, but we do also serve, you know, some of our mentors are in areas outside of that. Really, we just want to see if, you know, I recently interviewed a mentor who lives in Framingham, but I have another mentee who lives in Framingham as well, and I know they're going to be a good match. Like, personality-wise, they're perfect for each other. They're getting matched this week, so super exciting. Um, we have an interview process that we go through. They undergo background and reference checks to make sure everything's good, everything's above board, and they complete a comprehensive training with us. Our main mentoring program elements, right? Um, we have a year-long commitment. This is a little bit different from some other mentoring programs because we are not based on academic mentorship, right? It goes beyond academic. It goes beyond employment mentorship. We are really focused on building a friendship between the mentor and the mentee for them to really build a trust together um, to be that positive um, adult figure in their lives. Um, we do have goal setting sometimes, right? But this can look very, very different from formal and informal goal oriented and planning, right? It could be, I guess it's like, you know, I want to get my grade up in math class. I want to write a cover letter. Even just the goal of hanging out and building friendships, that's a social goal, right? That's huge for some of our mentees. Our mentors are also there to share resources, right? Even the mentees can share resources. Um, local professionals that serve as educational career mentors. Um, we also have this in our other programs as well. Um, and we have social engagement, right? We are, <laughs> we are working on this as we are recovering from COVID, but we are trying to host a lot more in-person events that our volunteers, our mentors, and our mentees can go to together. And now this brings us a little bit to our career readiness program. I do a lot of outreach for this one. So we have um, two parts of this, one that is school-based. So we operate in um, four different Boston public schools. I think we are operating now in five. Um, there is a slight limit on that, right? We do work with students who have um, documented IEPs and diagnosis um, and a disability diagnosis. However, the counterpart to this program is we work with any student within the transition age of 14 to 22 who doesn't have an IEP. So we have one that is directly, we're in Boston Public Schools, and another one where 
we're just out in the community and we go to different schools as well. And I have another video here that will tell a little bit more about this program. And we're going to play that right now. It's going to take me directly to YouTube. Um, I'll get that Our program is an inclusive job readiness program for transition age youth with disabilities. We're preparing them for employment, post-secondary education, and independent living. It's been really awesome to have um, such powerful conversations with young voices um, about their um, achievements and their dreams. Our career readiness program is really important. It's directly in line with BYD's mission to enable youth with disabilities to lead self-determined lives filled with dignity, pride, and purpose. He was a shy guy at the start, and uh, PYD gave him experiences that were really key and uh, to unlock his social and now his professional interests. So these days, he's working in the field of disabilities, um, as well, and he hopes to make contributions uh, to a better world for other youth and young adults with disabilities, too. So some of the big obvious successes that we see is when a student receives a job offer for a job they were really hoping for, or they start a job or tell us about how great something's going based on what they've learned in our program. The support and guidance from BYD has been amazing. They definitely have helped me um, gain, like, internships, which have helped me grow and gain my business and bring visibility. When our stories reflect that people and communities we serve were better able to live our mission and values. Um, people with disabilities are part of our community and add value uh, to our teams. So that video is really cool because it features some brief testimonials about our from our business partners. Give me one moment. There we go. All right. Um, so yeah, so part of my job in that is inviting different business partners to, to come into our classrooms, whether virtually or in person, ideally in person, right? We like engaging with someone directly face-to-face -face, um, to talk about what they do, right? We really try to highlight different industries that youths are interested in. Um, if anyone knows anyone who is a pilot who wants to talk to youths with disabilities, let me know. <laughs> Very elusive, right? I have a blind person with a super cool. Full talk. <laughs> super awesome. Um, for example, right, I am working with um, my coworker, Rachel Rubin. She is currently teaching a career readiness class. We are going through the interviewing curriculum. Something that I think we can all relate to was very scary when we first started out learning about interviews job letters, right, cover letters, all those things. So I partnered with an organization that I was a part of when I was a youth, right? Very similar to PYD. They're called Opportunity Network. They're based in New York City. Um, they focused on historically marginalized communities um, and very similar work that they do, right? So, so they did interview workshops, college literacy, all those things. I partook in those workshops. That's the only reason why I'm so good at public speaking now. They helped me gain my confidence. And so I reached out to them. I was like, hey, now that I'm an adult, do you want to come and volunteer with me? And they said, yes. So it's super cool, right? We're able to give back directly to, they're going to be coming in virtually. Unfortunately, they cannot all fly in from New York City, um, but they'll be coming in in about two weeks to do some interviewing workshopping with our youth. They are super excited. The youth are also super nervous, as you can imagine. So, you know, some of our classroom offerings, right, we have weekly 60-minute classes at each of these schools covering career readiness, um, financial literacy, and entrepreneurship. Um, we talk about in our pre-S offerings, pre-S stands for pre-employment transition services. That's the career readiness part that is outside of the Boston Public Schools. It includes job exploration, counseling, work readiness training, self-advocacy, post-secondary education, and work-based learning with the potential to aim for an internship. That's one of the really big things we try to do is that when a youth comes to us and says, I've learned so much from you, I've done interviews, I have a resume, I have a cover letter, I want an internship, we do our best to pair them with an internship, right? Um, we offer real world experiences. We have, like I said, guest lectures, people coming directly into the classrooms to talk about what they do. We have job shadows. We've had folks been able to go into 
um, different restaurants or stores and just kind of see like what would it be like right if I had like a job as a cashier um trade shows um and then again mentoring mentoring is ever a cornerstone of everything that we do right um we would not have these incredible programs if it wasn't for our business professional partners who come in and directly teach our youth about what they do they serve as educational career mentors through their lectures job shadows and trade show events So we focus on mentoring, we have career readiness, we have some fun things as well, right? So we have creative youth development. Um, we have community-based weekend and summer inclusive a theater arts program focused on performing arts and exploration. We cover everything from theater, dancing, singing, craft making, improv. It's super cool, it's super fun. Um, we serve all youth ages 14 and 22. This one's a little bit different because we specifically serve youth with and without a disability. And the reason for that is we're really trying to build peer relationships in this program, right? Helping use of all with and without disabilities to discover their love of theater. Also, of course, selfish plug, all of our programs are free. We never charge for a program. Um, so the goal with this, right, is a lot of use of disabilities want to focus on developing their social skills, right? Like, how do I make friends? How do I interact with people like me? And how do I interact with people who aren't like me? And they can do this safely through access to theater, right? By learning like, okay, we have two youths who are nothing alike, but they both love theater. So how can we make a relationship happen here, right? So we have after-school workshops during the school year at the Boys and Girls Club at Dorchester. And over the summer, we book a really cool theatrical space. Last year, I'm completely blanking on the name. The so last year, we had a two week long summer institute program that culminated in a theater performance. I was there. So cool, super, super cool. I have little flyers for it. People can pick some up and look at them. Um, but we're gonna watch another video about this program spotlight. Access to Theater Arts is an award-winning, inclusive theater program for teens and young adults whose purpose is to develop communication, artistic, and leadership skills, as well as lasting professional and personal relationships. ATT is such a interactive, and the youth gain so much from being together and having that world and that life of magical pretense. I think one of the things that makes ATT unique is the whole thing is created by them. Nice to see a, a group of people with disabilities doing something that, that I'm passionate about, such as theater. ATT helped me to open myself, express my feelings, and even my speech and vocabulary started to improve. So the main focus of the program is performing arts exploration and experimentation, but really at the core, it's about building community. And I think some people, when they come to our performances, to be quite honest, they say, oh, this is not lovely, they got to do a play. But it's not about the play. It's really not about the end product. We do the end product because they enjoy the end product. They have fun doing the end product and they can see their work, but it's about the process. And then I have another brief video featuring Mo to talk a little bit more about ATT. And I she ha she says some amazing UIP things in here. Mission, I think, in general, is just so. UIP's mission. I think, in general, is just to help people with disabilities show up in the world and be who they are. I think when you have a disability, sometimes you wonder what what is your you know, and I think in some ways teaching in general gives me purpose. Teaching in ATT, I can see the purpose. For me, ATT is not just something I teach in, but it's something I grew up in. ATT gave me a voice that I didn't know I didn't have until I came to ATT. But I'm all about trying to have purpose because that's all anybody wants to do. They want to be seen, they want to be heard, and they want to matter. What's lovely about that video too, is it featured some testimonials from some of our Access to Theater participants who have been joining the program year after year after year. And it's so lovely. I got to meet them for the first time last summer. Blessed in my life and also everyone's life because at the end of the day, 
when you don't have nothing to do, you just come to the program to be yourself. Can't live without technology, can't live with it. Um, let's try that again. <laughs> Um, all of you. So as I was saying, right, we have some youth returning year after year for our access to theater program. I got to meet them for the first time last summer. And it is, you know, I asked some of them, like, you know, you've been joining us for like three, four or five years. Why? And they're like, it's fun. And it's such a simple answer, right? But that's the core of it, right? It's fun. They get to hang out with their friends for two weeks straight, straight doing a bunch of theater, singing, dancing, and like, it's awesome that we get to provide that space for their creativity to really come out and show us what they're capable of doing. All right, so some of our program elements, right? Um, like I said, performing arts exploration, we provide a space for youths to explore after school. Um, and over the summer, drama, prose, poetry writing, visual arts, music, and any other kind of form of expression that um, youths are interested in. I don't think that our um, Deep Chinapa is our theater um, teacher. He's been doing this for 30 years. He used to not teach improv, but so many students are like, I want to learn improv. What is that? <laughs> so we started implementing it into our curriculum. Um, we focus on community building, right? We provide a welcoming, non-competitive environment for youth with and without disabilities who challenge their potential. They take risks, right? Some youths who are like, I can't sing. It's like, why not? You can sing. You like singing. Let's go. Let's do it, right? And they get to experiment with possibilities. And then it's also all about youth development, right? They're building self-confidence. They're building social awareness, empathy, and tolerance. Um, they're encouraging goal setting, cooperation, collaboration. And by working with other youths, they're developing communication, problem solving, and leadership skills, among other things. Now on to our youth leadership forum. This is, I got hired right as we were starting this program. So it is what I remember the most. Um, the long and short is that it is a community-based conference and series format. Um, it takes over five to six days over the summer. Um, we are, you know, we're equipping youths with leadership skills, resource networks, and the confidence they need. We serve all youths ages 14 to 16 with a documented disability. Um, However, between you and me, right? Documented disability really just involves me in an interview. You identify as having disability, yes, great, right? We do not really focus on paperwork. We're trying to make these programs as accessible as possible to any and all of you. Now I have another little video to show about YLF. The goal at YLF is to equip young leaders with disabilities with the skills, resources, networks, and competency they need. I want to take um experiences and how they can like get jobs. I want them to be able to leave ILF and having to and build relationships with people. While ask is for young people with disabilities to begin the process of developing self-advocacy and leadership skills, playing career goals, and building a network of support and friends. I feel like for someone with my disability, I've come pretty far in life, and I feel like if people know that with disability, other, especially other people with disabilities, could maybe they'll look up to me, or not even just me, but other people, and they'll be like, you know, if that person can do it, then I can. BYD is making bold and innovative improvements to this year's programs. Wild Out 2022 will feature a conference style format that will include speakers, panels, and workshops during active sessions, and network and social events and activities during the evening sessions. I realize many of the delegates to transition away from high school to college, to college is a very scary point or a, a hard thing to transition away. I want I want them to come away with some good memories as well as I want them I want them to start feel like that they that the transition, although tough, is not the scare is not as scary as they first think. For all delegates and peer leaders, DC was set around a key activity. And engagements around the feet. I like how um, I'm not really like really shy to be around um, these people, so it feels good to be around people who are like me. And hopefully, uh, I'll have that same feeling in just a week. <laughs> I kind of learned more about disability advocacy and how important it is, how important it is to kind of speak up to your legislators and, you know, um, just. You know, local mayor, it's just big government, everything. It's just kind of having 
um, let them know that people with disabilities need more rights. To apply, please visit our website and fill out the youth can take. A little highlight oh, from wow. that. Um, so some of our current elements, right? We, it is a statewide conference open to all youth in Massachusetts with disabilities. Um, there are other states that hold their own YLF program, so we kind of format a lot of our curriculum around that. Um, over the course of the multi-day conference, right, participants, well, not anymore. We're hoping to bring this back to being in-person, but one thing why our youths really love this program is it's in-person at a college dorm, right? Um, I think, I don't remember which college. I should have I should have looked it up. But <laughs> normally we, you know, we ask a college, we work with them, they host us for a couple of days. And students, right, they get to participate not only in conferences, but what it's like to live at a college dorm, right? What is it like to be away from your parents for a couple of days and just be around people just like you? Um, participants between the ages of 14 to 26 years, again, have a disability, but we do not check paperwork. We're trying to make this as accessible as possible. Similarly, we have our Young Leaders Rising Club, um, Young Leaders Rising program, which is YLF expanded. Um, so the purpose of YLR is to develop leadership and career readiness skills, make connections, and of course, always have fun. Um, while YLF is, um, occurs very quickly over the course of five days, YLR is a little bit different. It takes place over eight weeks total. Um, each two weeks is a specific module Right, we talk about disability history and advocacy, independent living, um, career readiness as a whole, um, and some other fun themes that we choose to explore. Um, it's open to any resident of Massachusetts who's a student, again, with any type of disability, um, ages 14 to 22 years. And I have another video here to show you while I take a little bit from talking. This year, YLR will be transformed into a leadership series, leveraging four two week sessions, a total of eight weeks. Take a deeper dive into things broadly explored in last year's program. We thought that it was important to really emphasize that it's disabled young adults, even though the world may not always be accessible or ready for us, we have the confidence and the preparation to succeed. This year's YLR will be centered around four themes. This will be pride and advocacy, independent living, career readiness, and post-secondary education. Like last year, fellows will work together with staff to create content and work together with artists. And getting to see our participants gain confidence in themselves and really just grow so so much in our short 12 weeks together. It's been so rewarding to me to get to teach other young adults with disabilities skills that I've been taught myself in the past. And there was one takeaway of the program out of the I realize that so many of the skills on the YLR curriculum are ones that were helping me be ready for college too. And that got me thinking, my experience isn't unique. As disabled young adults, we do everything in our power to prepare for the world, but we can't predict inaccessibility or ableism. That does not mean that we're not ready to face whatever life throws at us, so. though. Right. And then that's the website for applying, which I think is not relevant at the moment. Oh, wow. um, so the core elements of the program, right, it's an eight, eight week long program um, through which are used to um, develop leadership, career readiness, and self-advocacy skills. Um, YLR has always been held virtually online. This is to, again, ensure accessibility 
right? We're, at, um, we're reaching youth from all over Massachusetts. Some of them do not have the ability to come into Boston, but generally most people have the ability to go online on Zoom, right? Um, YLR empowers participants to build social networks, build deep connections um, by working with peers through online gatherings, workshops, discussions, and social events. Um, one other really cool thing, we don't talk about it in any of the videos, but we bring in a lot of outside partners and organizations. Um, for YLF last year, we had a really huge career brunch. In. What does that mean? Basically, we invited 30 professionals from four different industries, right? I think we had um, healthcare, we had law and social work, we had tech, actually we had more than four events. Um, but we brought in these adults to come and talk directly to our youth to ask any questions that they want, right? How did you get into this program? How did you know you wanted to be a doctor? How did you know you wanted to be a lawyer? If I want to be a lawyer, what do I need to do, right? All these different things. And we had a huge resource fair, not just college fair, resource fair, uh, from where we hosted people from 50 different organizations in Massachusetts. That included some colleges, that included trade schools, that included other disability resource organizations. Um, so you could kind of like, you know, virtually go around and be like, oh, like, I'm really interested in um, having a job coach that can really help me, you know, with my process of finding a job. Um, so we connect with a lot of people outside, a lot of local organizations to really showcase your use. Like there's a lot of resources out there. Let's help you get connected with them. So some fun little numbers. I'm not gonna go into the statistics. If you really want to read them, you can, but the impact of our programs, right? How does this affect our use? Why are we doing this? We've heard that, you know, self-esteem growth. I've personally spoken to some of our use and I've interviewed them for YLF and YLR. A lot of them said like, I really didn't want to do YLR. The last thing I want to do over the summer is tune into Zoom like three times a week, but I had so much fun, right? I directly heard from you like, thank you for interviewing me and pushing me to go. I made friends, I can't wait for next year. I love hearing that, right? Similarly, connection to community, right? Our participants learn about community events. They learn to network with each other. They make friends like themselves and not like themselves. There's a lot of self-advocacy that we teach and it makes me thrilled to hear that that's something they take away too, right? A lot of our youth say that they feel more confident speaking up for themselves, right? Whether it's at school, at the doctor, up to their parents, right? Like they know better about how to advocate for their own needs. Educational attainment, right? We talk a lot about we do focus a little bit on college, but we're really starting to shift the curriculum to where some youth are like, I don't want to go to college, right? I want to go to trade school. I want to go to work. What are the other options? And I'm really happy to say that our youth, you know, after they attend our programs, they're like, I know a little bit more about my different options after high school. And that's great. And of course, we always love to hear when our youth get a job, an internship, whatever it is, right? If it's a full-time job, part-time job, if you're working two hours, whatever. It is a start to um, equip our youth with the skills to feel like they can participate in these things, right? Of course, we have some highlights and testimonials. Again, most of this stuff is for our business partners to be like, ooh, very cool. You have some real <laughs> numbers behind you, right? Um, but um, in March 2020, when the big COVID hit, we have transitioned all of our programs to be fully virtual. Um, I personally love that. We have had really huge numbers in participation because like I said, not everyone can come into Boston, go to this college campus, but most people can log on to Zoom and we have had an incredible attendance in our program since we have switched them to virtual delivery. Um, in 2021, we hosted 40 real world experiences with 32 employee partners. That basically means we connected 40 like job ready students with internships that align with their interests. That's huge, not really super common for use with disabilities. Um, now the nice thing is that 100% of our business partners are like, QID is really cool. I'm gonna keep working with you guys, right? You like to hear that. Um, career readiness students have said that they feel much more confident finding and keeping a job, writing resumes, letters, um, interviewing. That's super awesome. And of course we are ever working in our curriculum. Um, this was summer 22, 2020, right? But we are current, all like always developing our curriculum to be modern, to be catered to the needs of our youth. We're always listening to feedback from our participants and trying to hear what they say that they need from us. And I believe that is the end of my presentation. 
Um, those are all the information about the programs that I have for you, the facts, the stats. Um, if, if there are any specific details about any of the programs I mentioned, or if you're like, that's really cool, how do I get involved um, online? Um, Sarkin will share my contact information in person. I have some flyers, I have some business cards, um, but thank you so much for listening to me jabber on for so long. Um, I appreciate your patience and your allowing me to be here. Thank you so much. <laughs>
um, queer youth, right? Do you have experiences working with that? Are you not comfortable working with that, right? So we really keep in mind um, what the youth asks for. Of course, we always base it on geographic supplements, right? If I have a youth in Salem, I'm not going to pair them with a youth in Quincy, with a mentor in Quincy, right? We want to make sure that they can both get to each other and have a good amount of time hanging out, not just commuting. Um, we keep in mind some youth, it is very important for them to, like, you know, I want someone, like I said, from my cultural background. Um, sometimes youth mentioned, I want someone who is um, in college so that I can talk to them about my college. Sometimes for youth, it's important for them, you know, I'm more comfortable working with women because I've been around women a lot of my life. I'm just more comfortable with that. So we really, as much information as they give us, we try to match based on their fit. Sometimes, right, it's also based on personality, right? <laughs> I get a big read on someone's personality when I interview them. So I'm like, oh, this person seems really bubbly, really fun. You know, I might pair them with someone who's like, you know, a little bit more shy because I'm like, maybe they can pull the youth out of their shell a little bit, right? Someone who can like really, really tap into their introversion or shyness. So that's something we keep in mind too. Okay. So uh, how is technology coming with use in your whole organization? So could you expand on that a little bit? I just want to uh, so suppose uh, we use voiceover and everything. Is technology coming to use to you? Yes, yeah. So I know that, you know, like I said, we really try to make our programs as accessible as possible. Mm -hmm. So we do, right, Zoom is our best friend. We okay. love having Zoom. Because um, like I said, right, I keep saying it, not everyone can come to downtown Boston for an interview or come to downtown Boston for a workshop. Most of the times people can log into Zoom, right? We do have some use who have some issues with having stable Wi-Fi, uh, right, having um, the proper technology to use it. That's something we try to, you know, we don't, we are unfortunately not a technology equity organization. We don't have that much <laughs> money, unfortunately, okay. to do that, but we really try to work with the youth, you know, if it, we have had youth who said, like, you know, I really want to be part of YLF, mm -hmm. um, or YLR, but I can't join, we have lent out some laptops, right, to make sure, like, you know, you know what, this youth could really, really benefit from joining our virtual conference, mm -hmm. let's see what we can do, right, we asked for some grants, we were able to give out a few laptops, mm -hmm. um, and have them join virtually, right, so that's something we try to do, we just, don't have as much ability to do as some other more organized organizations. That's great. We Thanks try. So much. I think we have time for one more question. Um, <laughs> um, do you guys connect the use with state services too? Yes. So that is something we really try to do. It might not be like a direct one-to-one -one pairing, right? Um, but we um, highlight as many services as we can. Um, for example, a lot of our youth are really interested in independent living, um, right? Like, how do I take the MBTA? How do I get access to the ride? How do I use transportation services? We are going to partner with an organization from the MBTA that directly does transportation training so that we can bring that to you and be like, hey, we have a use for those of you who are interested in learning about the MBTA. You know, this is some program we're partnered with. You can go to them. You can learn from them how to um, do things like that. So we really try to bring in um, a bunch of different organizations and offer their services as well, because we don't do everything, right? We're very aware that we unfortunately cannot do everything for our use. So by partnering with organizations that are equipped to do um, state services, for example, Easter Seals is a lot of work like that. We are very deeply partnered with them, and they work with some of our students to um, connect them with those services. I hope that answers your question. <laughs> So yeah, I think we can conclude our event. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So if all of you want to know more about the programs, now let's put down some flyers. I'll also be uh, posting those. Yeah. I'll also be posting those on our Allied official Instagram page and in our newsletter. So please feel free to take some uh, flyers before you walk out. And uh, let me tell you something about our next event. Now you can be a part of our sure. next event, <laughs> online or in person. Yeah. So our next event is after a short spring break. It's going to be on the 17th of March. It's about adaptive communication technology. It's uh, the guest speaker is Samantha Johnson. 
Uh, it's about a very interesting topic. I hope all of you can be there. Yeah, it'll be in the same room from 3 30 to 4 30, also virtually on Zoom. So, let uh, me. Yeah, I want to add she designed a really cool robotic arm that can do some uh, that can do ACS. Uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's at the Northeastern Institute. Yeah. 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 Here after the spring break. So, yeah, let's give our final thanks to our guest speaker, Melvin. Also, uh, very big thanks to our allied directors and our backbone, Dr. Ramona and Dr. Sad, the program manager. <laughs> thank you so much. And also, thank you so much, Valerie, for assisting us today. Hope to see you again uh, after the spring break. Thank, thank you. you. This is your project manager signing off. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, the conversation doesn't end here. Let's carry the knowledge and inspiration we've gained today forward into our lives, our communities, and our work. Together, we can create a world that is more inclusive, more compassionate, and more accepting for everyone, regardless of their abilities. Stay connected by subscribing to our YouTube channel, The Allied Project. Also, follow us on our social media at allied underscore noi. We have many more enlightening events and discussions coming up, and we'd love for you to subscribe to our newsletters. Contact us at allied at northeastern.edu. Thank you once again for your participation and support. Until next time, take care, stay inspired, and let's continue working towards a more inclusive world. Goodbye, and see you again.